What's up everybody, how are you all doing today? Good to see you. I can see a ton of people joining from all over the world, so um, <laughs> congrats uh, Arubius for being, for being legit first. I feel like we need some kind of um, baton or title on Discord, like for whoever, whoever gets first on the, on, the, on the streams gets that title for the week. Maybe I'll talk to one of the... Um, people who actually know how discord works and uh, see if we can we can make that happen um what's up daniel from paris how you doing good to see you i'm just scrolling down the list ah uh, good to see you andrew as always hello from the us um i'm not sure how to say your name shrushti sorry if i i'm terrible at names but uh cool name I, I just need to learn how to say it, uh, for sure. What's up, Nigeria? What's up, South Africa? What's up, India? It's late in India, for sure. Yeah, like, um, it must be, what is it, like midnight or something? Or like, I don't know. I always forget the, the time zones, but... Um, and Nepal, I really want to go to Nepal. I want to do some hiking, do some big mountains. That would be, uh, that would be amazing. 
a dream of mine. How are you doing? And uh, what's up, Vancouver? I have some good friends from Vancouver. Wait, they might be from Toronto. I'm not sure. I've never been to Canada. I need to go and uh, go snowboarding. So um, what's up, Fernando? Konnichiwa, Ginky. And uh, of course, it's going to be like, what, 2 a.m. in Japan? 1 a.m.? I know the time zone is a little, a little tricky out there. So good to see you. Thanks for tuning in, man. Uh, let me keep scrolling down. And Zach's in the chat. So if you guys, right, if you guys have co um, career questions, questions, like, yeah, career questions. If you guys have questions about how to enter, like, um, IT in general, or like, you know, if you're looking for, if you're transitioning into cybersecurity from like maybe a non-IT role, this is the guy that you need to speak to, knows everything. And of course, you can check out his YouTube channel, IT, IT career questions as well. Zach is just a fountain of knowledge. So um, definitely, worth, uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, let me scroll down. Oh, somebody thinks I'm Heath. I'm not Heath. <laughs> Like uh, Heath's British cousin, you know, it's uh, slightly different. Um, what else have we got? Ah, oh, I didn't, I forgot to do the, the whole TIBS thing. So this is like, TIBS is a, um, a conference uh, today, by the way. And so we swapped streams. So obviously he did my stream last night. If you, if you didn't notice, then fair enough. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, I forgot to do my... Uh, Hello, hello. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm I'm Tiberius for for the uh, for the evening. So, um, is PJPT hard? Um, uh, I think the junior one. I don't think it's necessarily hard. the The thing about hard and easy is it's all like um, it kind of depends. Like hard and easy is like a perspective, right? So. If you do the course materials and you prepare, then no, it's it's not hard at all. But if you just go into it blind, then yeah, it might be quite tricky. So, um, you know, I think the junior exams are designed to give you um, a realistic experience rather than really like tax you in terms of like, you know, really work hard and grind for it. It's more like this is what a day one on a junior role might be like. You know, if you're joining a um, a pen test as a junior penetration tester. These are some of the tasks like that you might have to do that are delegated to you. So it's going to prepare you for that. So that's really the goal of our junior certifications is to really make sure that you um, can like navigate your way around um, being, you know, a junior engineer or a junior pen tester or, or whatever, whatever. So I don't think it's necessarily hard, but of course that comes from good preparation. So um Hey, what's up, Texas? Yeah, so I heard, right, I wanted to have, um, so my favorite barbecue, which I'm kind of like somewhat flexitarian. Uh, I, I don't eat meat very much, but I do uh, if it's worthwhile. So my favorite barbecue is um, from South Africa with a friend of mine. Uh, we were living out, uh, when I was living out in Tokyo, and um, me and my, my friend, we, we, well, he taught me how to cook, like, South African barbecue, and that's been my favorite since. Because, you know, British cuisine, it's okay, but, like, I don't know, it's, it doesn't have a good reputation, at least. And then somebody was like, I was like, oh, yeah, maybe to Kentucky barbecue, and then I think it was Anne from TCM was like, no, Texas has the best barbecue. So this is um, when I visit the U.S. one day. Um, I'm coming to Texas just to try the barbecue and we'll see, we'll see what, how you guys compare compared to South Africa because South Africa sets the bar high. They, uh, the biltong is also very, very good. So, oh, 10.30 in India, not super late, but like that's late for me because I go to bed at like, you know, nine o'clock. So, <laughs> so uh, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um, what's up, Italy? What's up, Turkey? Yeah, tips went to Shmukon. This is uh, this is right. I wasn't sure that he publicly announced it, so I, I was like, he's at a conference, but now the cat's out the bag, so all good. Um, hello, Switzerland, and of course, I have a you know a close, I don't say like close relationship to Switzerland technically. So I'm I'm half Swiss for those who don't know. Uh, so I have Swiss citizenship or like a, like a passport, but I, uh, have grown up in the UK. Um, so, so there you go. There's a fun, fun fact for you. And, um, yeah, 
that's that's it just a fun fact but um yeah switzerland's really beautiful uh really nice place definitely worth visiting if you uh if you get the chance to go there um oh 2 a.m <laughs> oh all right well i'm i'm glad you're here for the stream much appreciated you're putting in the uh putting in the late night hours for sure you must have missed the last train. Like the last trains in in Japan are always like midnight as well. So hopefully you're at home and not um, and not tuning in from the office. So uh, so all good. Um, hello Israel, how's it going? Uh, oh Tanzania. I've okay. So I've been to Tanzania. Amazing place. If you get the chance to go, highly recommend. It's uh, the people are amazing. The atmosphere is amazing. The food's amazing. It's such a beautiful country. Um, I highly recommend. It's it's one of my like definitely like one of my top three places that I really you know uh, I'm glad that I got to visit. The top three favorite places in the world. All right, so let's um, let me scroll down. All right, <laughs> here's a question. Okay, so technically, technically. I still have the debrief to do, and the debrief is in three hours, so I still have that to do. But I cleared the exam, and I submitted my report. My report was accepted. So as long as I don't mess up the debrief, then, um, you know, I, I hopefully will have the certification. So um, I actually thought the debrief was this morning when I, when I looked at it, because I, I submitted my report yesterday. And then it was like, oh, hey, you need to book your debrief. And it was like, all right. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll just do it at 8 a.m. before I go to the gym. Because usually what I do is I wake up, um, I do like two hours of work or something like this. And then I'll go to the gym for an hour or so. And then I'll come back or I'll do a big block of work and then I'll, I'll take a long, um, a long lunch and, uh, and then go to the gym or, or, or at least leave the house at some point. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and then I woke up this morning and then it was like, oh, why is it in my calendar for 8 p.m.? And I was like, okay. So I was hoping to have it done by the end of the stream, but um, yeah, so thanks. <laughs> thanks for your support, guys. It was a really great exam and I'm, I'm doing a YouTube video on it, but um, honestly, it's like, uh, it's, as close to my experience of pen testing as I've ever seen a box. And I think the second closest is, is the content from, from um, uh, like the Rasta Labs and the CRTO. That's the only other content that I think like that and PMPT has been really close to. I mean, I don't have a ton of like network penetration experience. Um, I was doing network penetration for uh, penetration testing for a little while. Um, so I've been on engagements before and it, it really felt like I was on an engagement, which was super cool and a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate all you guys, uh, all you guys supporting. Um, so that's that's awesome. Um, suggestions for boxes. Oh, good question. <laughs> I think the main focus is um, really make sure you've got your Active Directory nailed um, because Active Directory is so important and it's it's not going to be like some stupidly complicated, crazy thing. Um, it's going to be like, are your fundamentals uh, solid? And that's, that's really, really important. Um, so I would still say... Um, like if you do like wreath or hollow on try hack me, I think those are really good, um, good practice boxes if, if you need to, um, if you need to uh, do them. And then do, 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 do. let me also keep scrolling down. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I'm getting messages on the, on the, different platforms all at once. Um, so I saw something in the chat that I was going to highlight, but I've, it's, it's gone. Ah, okay, here we go. Michael, yes. Yeah, so let me talk to you about how I prepared for, for PMPT. If you're, if you're going to do it this Saturday, which is awesome, you should definitely just, just go for it. Um, uh, what I did was I went back through the, like the course material, not like in depth, but I kind of like rewatched a couple of videos of a few things that I wasn't, um, wasn't confident on. Um, and also I took all of like the attacks out of, um, out of the courses and made like a checklist. So I was like, okay, OSINT, these are the websites I'm going to use. This is my kind of like game plan. And then I was like, okay, external pen test. 
I, I didn't worry too much about external pen tests because 99.9% of external pen tests are like web apps and that's my thing. So I'm like, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, no, and I know it's not going to be something crazy. But again, I need to think like if I was attacking um, um, uh, an external facing web application, I need to think about um, not going into some crazy rabbit hole, for example, like not doing like race conditions, for example, or not looking for prototype pollution and things like that. Need to keep things simple because, again, like if you think about the level of the exam. Um, and then uh, I basically had like an internal checklist. So I was like, these are the attacks I'm going to try first. This is how I'm going to enumerate um, like the network. These are the scans I'm going to run. This is how I find um, a host. This is how I'm going to find open ports. Um, I'm going to like look at, you know, for example, um, if I scan something and I saw a bunch of services open, I would prob probably like prioritize things like um, FTP, SMB, um, and things like that over things like SSH, unless I found an SSH key, of course, but like, like, I mean, from a vulnerability and attacking point of view, like I, I had this list. So, so that's kind of what I did. Um, it only took me about an hour. So honestly, I would write yourself a bit of a game plan. Um, and that's going to keep you, keep you on track. And honestly, there's nothing groundbreaking in, in the game plan, but, um, it just, it really helps me like focus on what am I doing next rather than being like overwhelmed. So that's, um, that's a good trick, I think, um, for sure. Um, do, 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 let me keep scrolling down. Oh, oh, is this is this something? <laughs> is this something? Uh, uh, I don't know what this is. All right, so Austin versus Dallas barbecue. Is this? Um, is this a controversial topic? <laughs> Do I have to choose one and then not and and the other? I don't know. Somebody somebody tell me what I need to try. Oh, if you need to uh, if you need to contact me, by the way, uh, my link tree is on on the screen. But LinkedIn is the best way to get in touch. Uh, LinkedIn DMs. Um, I, I generally see them. So um, I honestly I never check my email. <laughs> I'm terrible for email. Stupid! It's it's the worst technology. It's so so old and terrible. So um, so yeah, check me on LinkedIn. That's that's the best way to get in um, uh, in uh, in touch if you if you need something. Um. Oh, uh, do you mean OSCP? So I think so. I think the PMPT and OSCP are very different exams. And I, okay, so. But you have to remember that I did OSCP before Active Directory was added to OSCP, if that makes sense. So I did like the classic version where you had five boxes, um, an easy three mediums, no, two mediums and a hard and a buffer overflow. Um, and the learning materials like for Active Directory were like, hey, let's build a random script that enumerates users in the domain. And I was like, okay, that's that's cool. <laughs> Not very helpful, to be honest. Um, I think they're supposed to be like a similar level. They're supposed to be like entry level, but they prepare you in very different ways. Um, OSCP, I think, really develops your troubleshooting skills um, and your ability to um, kind of pull off more complex exploits. And I think PMPT prepares you for like stepping in and being able to do a thorough penetration test of like an uh, of an uh, Active Directory network, which is you know everybody's network basically. So they're a little bit different, but I, I feel like yeah, you know they're kind of on a on a similar level. Um, you definitely you know the priorities for them are a little bit different. That's that's how I feel anyway. Um. Is the bug bounty course enough to start web application hacking? I hope so. <laughs> That's what I designed it for. Um, yeah, I, but I mean, the thing is, like, like to start one hundred percent. Like everything we go through is um, is like really fundamental stuff, so you can go through it. And then we designed it in a way that you should be at the point where you can start doing things like bug bounty and should be able to find bugs. Um, or if you want to kind of like learn about more um, advanced topics, um, like I was saying before, race conditions, prototype pollution, and things like that, then of course you can supplement that with the Port Swigger Academy. But 
I think it gives you a, a really good foundation. It's just my my opinion, but you know, there you go. Um, what's up, Scotland? How's it going? I was in um, where was I? Last year, I went up to Scotland. I did like a little bit of a tour. Um, I'm a big fan of Edinburgh, of course, because um, I went to university up in the north of England. So I was living in Newcastle. And uh, yeah, Edinburgh is always, uh, it's just like an hour on the train. So, so all good, but really beautiful place. The only, the only downside to Scotland is the, the midges. <laughs> they, they eat you alive if you're out at the wrong time of year. But otherwise, it's a really beautiful place. And actually, I considered moving to Scotland and living there. Um, and maybe I still will do one day. Who knows? But uh, um, Let me keep showing down. I, uh, showing down? Scrolling down. Um, so I have a video in the works. I'm going to record it tomorrow and then I'll, I will have a blog post coming out as well. So the video will be out in a couple of weeks, I think. Um, I can't remember what our schedule looks like uh, in terms of releases, but, um, but I will definitely have a PMPT video coming out uh, soon. So, so all good. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me keep scrolling down. So I'm just catching up with the chat. I'm like five minutes behind, I think. About five minutes behind, six minutes behind. So hold up, hold up. Let me see. Um, so can you use your own notes during OCP? Yep, you, you can use anything you like, as long as it's not like a, a, somebody else's exam report or something like this, you're, you're basically all good. Um, so you can use anything you want, same as PMPT. So you're all good. Um, let me keep scrolling down. So I presume this is a question about the PNPT. So do you get a VM inside the network um, and you need to pen test a subnet? Um, so all of the information, like once you sign up for the exam and everything, the scope is really clear and everything is, is, um, is kind of like, you know, um, I don't want to like, I, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, so I don't want to say too much, but like once you get the rules of engagement, it's, it's pretty clear what you need to do. Um, you do need, um, a VM or, or a testing machine set up. So like Kali or something, um, and you need to be able to connect to a VPN and then that's, that's all you need, like, you know, technically to, to then get on with your exam. So, um, so yeah, all good, but they don't give you like, um, you won't get like a dedicated Kali box, for example, you can use your own or you can use like Debian or Windows or whatever you want. Use any tools you want, basically. Oh, this is great advice. Um, take notes as you go along. Yeah, I did this as well. So I'm um, generally speaking, I think we were talking about this on, on Discord. Um, I was basically saying, hey, when I do, um, when I'm on an engagement or if I'm doing... Um, doing an exam, I basically um, take notes as I go along. I tend to take bullet points of things that didn't work or things that I did. And then as soon as I pop something or make some progress, I take screenshots. And then I have the screenshots ready to go in the reports um, uh, for, for later on, or if I need to revisit something. Uh, because sometimes you'll pop something and then you might forget a step or, or you might not have realized you'd done something. You might not be able to re-exploit it. And so screenshots are super helpful in that situation. So, uh, so yeah. Um, yes, it's in the works. Uh, I can't give you an exact date, uh, but I think this year there will be some very cool, more advanced stuff dropping from TCM because we have a lot of foundational stuff covered now, um, especially on the web app side as well. Um, so we're looking to kind of like build on top of that. And I'm working with Tibbs on some cool web app stuff. And I know that there is also some like more advanced red teaming um, and pen testing content in the works as well. So yeah, watch this space. Um, we have a lot of cool content coming, which is, which is awesome.
Oh, this is a great, um, this is a great question. Uh, so I'm about halfway through the course at the moment. Um, I did a little bit of a pause on it. So far, the material is really good. Um, I learned a few, um, a few new things as I was going through it, which is always nice. Um, and it's, it's well put together. Um, I think also like some of the, some of the sections, because like I do a lot of web app stuff, I kind of just skipped the exercises and then did the exercises. But I think, um, if you're kind of new coming in, I think if you're a complete beginner, it's probably not the best place to start because it throws you in kind of like into intermediate straight away. But if you're, if you have a little bit of, um, web app experience, or if you've built web applications before, or if you're used to doing um, a lot of CTFs on Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, whatever, it's it's a good course. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know about the exam. I haven't taken the exam yet. So I'm planning to do it at some point this year just so I can see it and review it and get ideas from it and, and learn from it. But um, but yeah, I think it's it's definitely worth checking out. It is quite expensive. It racks up after a while. I don't know why. My the one thing I hate about the Hack the Box Academy is their stupid pricing system with the stupid cubes. You can purchase them, you can subscribe to them, you get some of them back. You never know what anything costs. It's it's ridiculous. So you know, but other than that, I think the quality of the content is very high. But the pricing system is bonkers. Like, who the hell invented that? Somebody who was drunk and was like Oh, let's create a cubes system because we're hack the box. And I don't know. I don't know. Some marketing guru, marketing guru maybe, who invented the pricing system. Just have a subscription and, and job done. Um, oh, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I always get this. Uh, I feel like. I don't actually like my own voice, of course. No, nobody really does. But it's always nice to 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 know that my voice isn't jarring to other people, which is which is good. So I appreciate I appreciate the sentiment. Uh, ooh, cherry tree. Right, this is super old school. I feel like do you, do people really use cherry tree these days? <laughs> no, I'm kind of joking because obviously. Like you should spend more time taking notes and less time worrying about how you're taking those notes. That's like the really important thing. But um, I lost um, a ton, probably like three or four months worth of notes because my cherry tree, oh no, maybe I think my VM died. Like cherry tree was kind of broken and then the whole VM was like wrecked for some reason. And then I lost a ton of notes. So I was really annoyed at that. So now I use Obsidian and it syncs to a private GitHub repository. And that works wonders. Um, but, you know, like Cherry Tree, like the actual functionality, like the hierarchies and stuff is all good. But um, I didn't realize people were still using, using Cherry Tree. I did a video on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's come to the VM. Let's, let's see. I, I think I did a video on, um, I don't know why. Every time I load up my VM, look. This this is here. Why is that there? Very strange. Let's go to YouTube. Wait five hours for it to load. I did a video on um, uh, notes. What is it? The cyber mental um, uh, notes keeping. Is it, is it this? Oh yeah, best note taking apps ranked with a. You know me looking like a a goon on the on the front, of course, as always. Gotta love the uh, the random pictures that I use for for thumbnails. Ah, oh, got ads. This is the worst. All right, hold on. Let's skip this video. No, it's stuck on one. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, let's go towards the end. What was the end? God, look at my beard. All right, so Joplin got number one. And then we've got Obsidian and Notion. And then we've got Gitbook, Google Docs. Is this GitHub? Yeah, I think it's just just like, just put all your notes in GitHub. Then we've got Cherry Tree down in C tier. And then um, whatever this is, OneNote. And then this crazy thing. What was this? Um, ah, who knows this logo? I can't remember what it is. It's like if you took the old OSCP course, I'm not sure if they've updated it, but this is the old application they they used to uh they used to recommend so 
So definitely, uh, yeah. Well, that's not the most flattering freeze frame. So let's let's close that. <laughs> we'll come back. <laughs> we'll come back to live. Um, oh, did they move? Um, did they move it to pen three hundred? The funny thing is, is on OSCP, the buffer overflow was the easiest twenty five points. It was like you just do a basic buffer overflow and bam, twenty five points. So it was it was kind of nice. Oh, this is a, a great comment. I just want to highlight this. So taking your time while you're going through courses, especially if the material is new, is like, yeah, 100% the right way to go because quality over quantity every time. And also because the things like the PEH cover all of the fundamentals and those are the things that you will use time and time and time again. Um, other kind of like tricks and things like that. Yeah, maybe maybe you'll use like, I don't know, maybe occasionally you might be able to like create an obfuscated payload for print nightmare but if you spend like four hours studying that and getting print nightmare to work versus four hours studying like fundamental stuff like the return on time investment is is massive so this is um yeah 100 percent uh spot on i think uh for sure um let me what's up zen monkey good to see you in the chat as always so I'm a little bit behind on the, um, oh my God, I'm 12 minutes behind. All right, let me skip down. We'll take one or two more questions and then we'll jump into a box because I, I thought we'd do a fun box today. And uh, just for fun, I think I did this box on live stream a while ago, but I didn't do the privesque. And there's a good reason why I didn't do the privesque. It's because we're going to have to do some reverse engineering, uh, reverse engineering and maybe some binary exploitation. We'll see. Um, I vaguely remember having to do it and then being like, no, nah, I'm not doing this on stream because I hate reverse engineering. And I don't hate it. I'm just terrible at it. So, um, so, we'll, uh, so we'll be all good. Um, all right. Do, 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 do. Since it's Web App Wednesday, let's... Oh, I need to find a machine. Oh, there is there is something I wanted to do very quickly, and this is um, all right. I'm going to start a new thing. This is this is it, and you can all contribute. So we have the Tuesday stream um, chat on on Discord, right? And every week, what I want to do is I want to like highlight like a lesser known creator or resource that people don't know about. And so um, this week. And uh, so the point is, is if you find an awesome resource, drop it into like the, the, the Tuesday stream chat, even though it's Wednesday today. Okay, I get it. Um, uh, and then I'm going to share it on stream so that you guys get like really great underrated resources. And today's one is uh, my DFIR. And I think I mentioned it in, in Discord the other day when we were talking about SOC analysts. If you're interested in blue teaming and you want to become like a SOC analyst, for example, I was um, watching, uh, where is it? Oh my God, there's so many videos. Um, there's a 2024 roadmap video. Oh, it's this one. It's the most recent one. This is an excellent video. If you're interested in becoming a SOC analyst in 2024, come and watch this video. And it's, um, it's my DFIR on... Um, on YouTube, and this is the resource that like I'm sharing with you this week. And he's only got like 10k subscribers at the moment, so it's kind of like uh, probably quite a lot of people do know who this is, but maybe not everybody. So, um, um, so yeah, this is my resource for the week. And oh yeah, if you want the Discord link, uh, I think it's discordgg forward slash discorf. That's my competitor name, my phishing link, uh, the Cyber Mentor. I think it's this. Yeah, this is... Oh, no, invalid. Discord.gg slash TCM. Is that it? Yeah, this is it. Okay. Okay, let me pop it in the chat. So if you have um, some awesome resource, like, you know, or like a YouTuber or like, um, like internals, all the things, which... I think I, everybody knows about now, but it came out quite recently, um, which I shared on LinkedIn uh, last week or the week before. Um, 
let me know in in discord and then i can i can queue them up so that we can you know we can share and, and like share great resources as a community so this is my new my new thing for for these streams is sharing and, and caring about um lesser known uh content creators all right let me start this box cd vpn open vpn I think that's the right one. Is this the right thing? Is this the right one? Oh, hold on. Okay, yeah, I think it is. We're, we're all good. And uh, <laughs> so distracted by uh, by the Slack chat, the work chat. I told, uh, I dropped into work chat. I said, hey. Heath needs to start doing audiobooks, and um, yeah, I feel like everybody everybody agrees. <laughs> All right, so let's cd into here and let's make a directory. And okay, we're gonna do bookstore, but we're gonna privesk it this time. So we're gonna do some APIs because um, APIs are like drive the world. And um, if you caught my bookstore stream, like. I want to say like eight or 10 months ago, then props to you. Um, but apologies, we're going to do it again. <laughs> so, so I have done this box before, but I've, I haven't done the Privesk. Um, and it's been a long time since I've done it. So we'll go through it, see how we get on. Um, and it should be fun. Um, Okay, so we're going to run nmap. So I'm just going to run nmap with all the flags. Um, I'm going to output normal to scan.initial, and then we're just going to, yeah, it's this 10, 10, 10, 6.50. And then while it's doing that, I'm just going to come in and sudo bin etc hosts, or oh, hosts, and then do this, and then just add bookstore.thm to my hosts file. So when I access, um, when I send a request to bookstore.thm, it's going to go to that IP address. Um, and then let's exit out of this. Okay, so 2280 and 5000. So things that I would take away from this, okay, so when you're looking at your Nmap scan, generally speaking, you can probably ignore SSH Maybe if it's a really old version, but I don't, I think I've only ever done one CTF where SSH was like as a service was exploitable, and I've never seen in real life uh, a working exploit for like uh, on a live system or a live pen test where SSH was was exploitable. So, you know, it probably happens, but not very often. Um, and then we have eighty, so we've got Apache. Um, 2.4 and then yeah we've got the title bookstore and then we've got this 5000 and this is like the Werkzeug, Werkzeug? I, I don't know how to say this my my German's not very good um, uh, and it's running on Python 3 which is which is interesting and then um, we have one disallowed entry which is slash API so we're gonna have a look at both of these because both of these warrants um, uh, investigation, I think. So let's do, whoops, uh, bookstore.thm, HTTP colon slash slash. So let's just check out this page. And we also want to check out 5,000. And we saw, I mean, we can, we can check it like manually as well. So we have this disallow slash API. And we have what looks like some API documentation. And clearly, the box creator was a fan of, of Harry Potter. So, all good. Um, so, when we're looking at APIs, all right, so when, when we're looking at these routes, so we can see that everything is slash API. 
And then we have slash v2. So when we're looking at APIs, there's a few things that we want to think about. Um, if we have an endpoint, let's say like this is a get request, we want to think about, okay, what if we post to it? What if we use head? What if we use options? What if we use patch, put, delete, for example? Could we manipulate data like that? This v2 may it shows that we're like on, on v2, right? So maybe we want to try v1, or maybe we want to try API slash resources, for example. Um, without this at all. And then this resources keyword looks like everything is under here. So we might actually have another API endpoint that's not in the documentation that might be API slash v2 slash, I don't know, command shell. <laughs> Probably not. But we, we can think about fuzzing this. And then we also have this slash books. And then we have all of these parameters. Um, and we can think about, okay, can we combine these parameters? Are there other parameters and things like that? So whenever you're um, thinking about APIs, um, or at least whenever I'm thinking about APIs, I'm thinking about, okay, what other APIs might exist? How can we manipulate the information we have already to find other information? So, um, yeah, sorry. So I'm working on Bookstore on uh, Try Hack Me. Let me put the link in the chat for you. This one. Whoops. And hopefully we'll we'll actually root it. Um, so yeah, the links in the chat if you wanna if you wanna take a look. I wonder if it's a free room. Let me double check. Info. Yeah, it's a free room. So if you wanna come along at the same time, by all means. Um, uh, all good. So let me just check into the chat real quick. Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> um, hey, what is the VC? What is this? Is this something I need to join or is this something that Zach needs to join? I, I don't know what's happening. What's what's the VC? Hmm. This is a good question. Um, so can you pass TCM exams with just the training from TCM? Yes. Um, the exam doesn't have any tricks. Um, it's designed to test you on the material and also test your kind of like your methodology and your thinking and your thoroughness. But um, if you've learned the material, you'll pass the exam. That's that's basically how it's designed. We don't we don't try to make you um, go and do other stuff, if that makes sense. You can obviously like you know improve, and I, and I highly recommend that you do read around and um, and look at other resources. Of course, why would you not? But um, it's not necessary if that makes sense for for the exam. So definitely worth. Um, definitely worth. So what what I would do is if I was to start from zero. I would I would do the courses, um, and then I would do a little bit of extra practice on like wreath or hollow or some like Active Directory stuff, and then I'd do the exam. That's that's kind of how I'd do it, and I I'd do those things just for extra practice, just for like extra troubleshooting, um, getting to know my tools in different situations and things like that. But everything you need is is in there, so all good. Um, yeah, I, in fact, yeah, Zach's covered it perfectly here. So uh, all the certifications are designed about with the training in mind. That's that's the whole point, right? You do the training, you do the work, and then you pass the exam. Um, all right, let me keep scrolling down. Um, yeah, this okay. So this is the thing with. I don't think Cyclist has a decent, because when you're working with APIs, you kind of want to work with routes. So generally speaking, um, what you actually want to do is look at the asset note word lists. And these are like, you can pull these into like Kite Runner. Um, wait, hold on. I don't want the company website. I just, here we are. But they have really great um, API routes here. So this is um, wordlists.assetnotes.io. 
this is worth bookmarking. And actually some of these other word lists, which are just like actual word lists rather than root lists, I suppose, um, are also really, really good. Um, so if I, when I'm testing APIs, pretty much I use these, these word lists rather than, um, rather than, uh, uh, rather than like the cyclist ones, if that makes sense. Um, all right. Uh, so let's take a look at this. In fact, let's do a little challenge. Let's do this without BEP suite. Let's, let's see what's going on. Um, <laughs> maybe I've just shot myself in the foot. We might need burp suite later on. Um, but let's click around. And also, I want to come to the network tab. So let me scroll in a little bit here. I'm actually a big fan of like using the um, like the developer tools. This used to be Firebug a long, long time ago. Um, and then it got integrated into Firefox. And then all the other web browsers were like, hey, those dev tools look really, really cool. All the devs are using Firefox. Maybe let's add them to, you know, to Chrome and everything else. So now, obviously, Chrome and every, everywhere else has, has these. But um, let's take a look and see what we have. So if I cache refresh, I just want to see what requests are going out. Mostly I'm looking just for things like, so we see, we have like utils.js, main.js. We might dig into that. Nothing too crazy. And while that's actually, before we do that, let's run a little bit of fuff as well. So let's do a little bit of directory busting. I feel like I'm a bit like having done the, finished up my exam over the weekend and like, submitted the report and I've got the debrief in a couple of hours. I feel a bit like, I don't know, a bit giddy. I don't know. My, my thought process might be all over the place today. So apologies for that. Um, user share. Oh, what do we want to do? Let's say, do we want to do set lists or do, no, let's do, um, let's do Deb. I like Deb. Uh, and let's, let's see what's, what's on here. Oops. So we've got JS, but this is a 301, which is interesting. And then we've got assets. Nothing too exciting. Let's take a look. Um, why is, okay, so this is a bit odd. We've got a JavaScript folder, but we've also got a JS folder here. Might just be coincidence. Oh, we're forbidden. Interesting. Okay. Let's come in here. All right. So if you're working with um, newer applications uh, that use like React and things like this, like, like modern front-end frameworks, um, you'll actually find a lot of endpoints uh, in the front-end. Um, and you'll be able to find um, things in the front-end code. So like... You know, obviously we've got these endpoints here that we're going to get around to testing in a little bit, but also front-end JavaScript. If you're, you know, if um, like Angular, React, um, Vue, whatever it is, um, there'll always be. If it's an API-driven application, there'll always be interesting information. Um, here we can just take a look at this, I think. And then we've got this API endpoint. So we've got slash API v2 resources books slash random four. Let's see. So this is okay. This matches up to the documentation. Uh, so that's all good. And then we've got this async function. So this is going to render our users. So we've got title, user.title, first sentence, user first sentence, author. Notice that this is like um, templates. So do we have template injection? Don't, oh, no, sorry, this is not um, template. This is just variables um, getting carried away. And then we have a note here. So, okay, so the previous version of the API had a parameter which led to a local file inclusion vulnerability. Okay, so it's a little bit CTF-y here. It's kind of telling us the, the solution. Um, glad now that we have the new version is secure. So if you remember what I was saying before, we have this V2. We always want to think about V1, V0, um, slash dev, or, or whatever. 
because the funny thing about APIs is people like teams will want to update an API within an organization and then other teams will be like, oh no, we're not updating our thing. So you, you have to keep your API the same as it is. And then suddenly there's two APIs. There's the legacy API and then there's the updated API and the legacy API never changes because one, it's needed uh, and two, it has vulnerabilities. So this is a really common thing to, to look for when you're working with, with API endpoints. So let's take a look at this. And we can just go to uh, what bookstore.thm. Uh, and I think all of the APIs are on, yeah, they're on the 5,000 endpoints. So if you remember, it looks like what's actually happening is this is the web application here, and the, all of the API endpoints are running on 5,000. So we've got Paolo. I thought that said Pablo for a second. I'm um, currently listening to um, uh, a book about Pablo Escobar when I'm going to the gym because I listen to audiobooks at the gym. Um, really, really interesting book. I got the idea from Breaking Bad. So I was watching Breaking Bad and then um, when Hank's in the hospital, sorry if this is spoilers, um, uh, Walt's son is like, oh yeah, Hank gave me this book. And I, th I think it's called Killing Pablo Escobar and it's written by the guys who like like eventually brought him down. And um, yeah, anyway, it turned out to be a really interesting book. I'm only about a third the way through it, though. But um, but yeah, all good. Um, so we have this, and then we have this, and then where do we go from here? Do we want to start fuzzing um, our endpoints is the real question. Or do we want to just carry on poking around? Hmm. I think between what we can probably try is let's try the endpoints, get them working, and then we'll also see if we can get this old version of the endpoints working. That's probably the, the best way to go, I think. Um, let me just move this quickly. Sorry, I can't see the chat because everything's moving around. There we go. Okay. Oh no, my chat disappeared. Oh, it's gone. All right, my chat refreshed, so I can only see new messages. Apologies, uh, apologies for that. Um, so let's grab this, and then let's come to here, and let's just curl, and then we get we get the data back, right? Okay. So, and it talks about an old endpoint. Okay, so here, if we do v1 we get resource could not be found, but this could also be the zero or nothing at all. But it looks like, okay, this endpoint's not the one that we're, we're looking for. Um, and I think that was the random all. I suspect this is the same, but we might come back to the slash all if we don't find anything else elsewhere. So let's try this, let's try the search. Uh, actually, let's just grab slash so slash resources. Whoops. Slash books. Mm, okay, so this is suspicious. All right, so here we can curl this endpoints, right? And uh, we can curl bookstore.thm. Um, API slash v1 resources books and the ID is one, but we can also do the same to slash v2. So this is probably the legacy endpoint that we need to be uh, that we need to be targeting. So let's think about this. It told us that there was a local file inclusion vulnerability. But we're only passing in the ID. What about the others? So this has we have ID, author, published, and author. None of these look like file names, but for example, if we do, mm, we could try like published. We might have to fuzz this. Like etc passwd doesn't return anything. Let's try, let's try ffuf dash u, whoops, like this. 
fuzz equals etc pasta bd. And then word list, we want to fuzz for parameters. User share cyclist. I vaguely remember. I think this is the way. Uh, user share cyclist discovery. Uh, I can't remember whether. Okay. If you ever need to find um, word lists in, in cyclists, like I always have to do, if you do find user share cyclists and then dash i name so that it ignores like capitals and things. And then we'll do param like this. We can find word lists for, for parameters basically. So this is a nice little little trick. Um but sweet param minor parameter names. Uh let's go with the burp sweet params, because that's the one that comes with burp sweet, and I quite like those lists. Um Oh no, where was it? Oh, web content. Web suite param names. Okay, let's go. Let's see if we can find this local file inclusion vulnerability. Hmm. Okay, so only ID author and published. So maybe we need to change. Ah, uh, we did it against the V2 endpoint. That was done. Let's try this against the V1 endpoint. Always, how did you, did the chat not pick that up? You guys are usually spot on with stuff like this. <laughs> we want to be against V1. Okay, so we've got this show, which I don't think came up here. So author, ID, and published. And then we've got author, ID, published, and show. Okay. Uh, and it looks like the size of this is huge. I feel it size three, size three, size one, five, 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 five. So I suspect what we actually want to do is go V1 here, books. What was it again? Show equals etc pasta bd. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. You gotta you gotta let me learn on my own sometimes. Let me let me feel the pain and, and troubleshoot. Uh all good. All good. Um so yeah, here we are. We have uh file inclusion. That's it, job done. <laughs> no, not really. I think this is where we got to last time, if I recall. I'm not sure whether we actually got a shell or not. I don't have the flags in TriHack Me, so um Let's see, if we press Control U, we'll see it in a little bit more nicely formatted. Let's see if we can just snag the flag for now. The Sid? Yeah. Let's see if we can steal it from here. This is like a cheeky user.txt. There we go, that's the user flag. Don't even need to get a shell. Um, how do I submit this? Here we are. All right, there we go. That's flag number one. But actually, what we want to do is we want to, to be able to get a shell. And if I do recall, we have actually, um, whenever I see this, uh, the Verkzerg thing, um, more often than not, well, actually, no, not more often than not. But sometimes, within, like, especially within CTFs, um, there's like a debug mode for for this. And I, I vaguely remember seeing this from last time. So this isn't just like a you know a random thought, but something to check for. Yeah, here we go. Whenever you see this web server um, running like this, um, you should go to slash console. This is the default endpoint for like an interactive console. Um, although we need the pin, we might be able to brute force it, who knows. Um, but since we have file inclusion, um, we can probably figure out um, what the pin is. So let's copy this and let's do some Googling because I can't remember where the pin is stored. Where is Vexag pin stored?
So it might be in the EMV, like the environment. It's like um, not sure. Let's have a look at hack tricks. No, we might gonna. I think we're gonna have to look around for it. Okay, let's uh, let's the uh, the hunts begin. So we will have a look at Varlog. Um, uh, is it Apache two? Apache access dot log. Ooh, what did we get here? It's not view source. Okay. Don't think it can find that. Um, let's try var log mail. Nope. Can't find that. Uh, let's try proc self id. See where we are. No. Uh, oh, I missed out the slash. Nope. Environ. Aha, we got it. Okay. So here, yeah, in the environments, um, we have this 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 pin. So if you can, um, whenever you get um, uh, file inclusion, think about. And this is this is a great. Um, suggestion as well looking at bash history looking at the environment um your environment variables um looking at um dot ssh slash id underscore rsa um looking at log files uh configuration files um whatever you can um i had a good idea that this was in here because i've seen this before but um I couldn't remember the exact path, but the proc self environment is, is also useful sometimes to uh, to check. And then we can put the pin in, and then we have this console. So we can just do Python, um, and we can do like os.system, who am I? Oh, that didn't work. We're not zero. Uh, do we need dot read? Nope. Uh, let's try p open. Ah, okay, yeah, p open. Dot read, and we're we're Sid. So this is a a nice little uh, command execution. All right, let me try and upgrade this to a shell quickly, and then I'll I'll catch in with uh, with the chat and see how you guys are doing. If you have questions, then by all means, uh, drop them in. And let's just go payloads, all the things, reverse shells, can't spell, but it's fine. We got to the right place. Python. And let's grab this second one by the looks of it. And then I'm just going to mouse pad quickly. Get rid of this Python dash C because we don't need that already in Python. And we also need uh, our IP address. So let's grab this. Oh. And drop the IP address in. 4444. Copy this. We might have to try a few different ones. We'll see. Paste that in. Yes, we got a shell. Okay, nice, 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 nice. Not too bad. Um, so I kind of had a rough idea of what we're looking for because I've gotten to this point before. But um, but uh, yeah, it's nice to redo boxes and come from it from a like a different angle or, or a different thought um, and and things like this. So. Always love seeing that shell. 
Um, let's quickly upgrade this. And um, I can't remember who it was trolling me in the chat uh, for not upgrading my shells properly. Pty.spawn. Um, so we're going to try and do it. Let's see. Because it's really easy to respawn the shell if we... Um, if we do it so, um, if we do control Z, STTY raw dash echo, and then FG X term equals, ah, uh, now what is it now? No, export term equals X term. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I always forget this whole process. I don't know why, but um but I'm I'm just lazy. I, I just like um putty and then I'm then I'm all good. Alright, so now we've got like oh <laughs> we found the privesk. Okay. Um it's nice to kind of have like a, a fully functioning terminal. So uh, we already got the user flag. And Let's see. Okay, this is where... Okay, so last time this is where I stopped because I'm pretty sure we're going to have to reverse engineer this this binary. Um, so let's try strings. So when I do strings on something, um, I always look for like um, binaries that don't have the full path or things like passwords or, or, or anything that could like, you know, maybe there's a flag in there, who knows. Um, so just kind of have a look down. We've got this... What's this? What's the magic number? And then we've got the bin bash with the privilege flag. And since this has a sewered bit set, so you can see this is, you know, it's highlighted in red and it has the S. Whenever this is run, it's going to run as the owner rather than the group. Um, so the owner is root and the group is Sid. But actually, um, when, if we run this, um, it's going to run as root. So we actually want to activate this bin bash dash p this will give us a privileged shell um if we manage to exploit it but hold on let me just look through the rest of it and see make sure i haven't missed anything okay so let's try running it what's the magic number uh is it 43 Unfortunately not. Um, okay. And there's nothing in strings that's that useful. So we could brute force this. We could like just keep generating numbers, but okay, let's do it. Pseudo apt install Ghidra. Let's start, let's do some reverse engineering. Let's do it. And you can all laugh at my pathetic RE skills. I'm gonna give it a minute to uh, to install Ghidra. So, how's everybody's January going? Did um, did everybody keep up with their New Year's resolutions so far? I hope so. How many of you made a New Year's resolution that you've already broken? That's that's a question. <laughs> uh. All right. Ah, uh, gosh, taking forever to install Ghidra. Okay. So this is this is a New Year's resolution in itself to not make resolutions. <laughs> but depending on, like, you know, I don't know, life. Life is life, and sometimes this is the best way to go, for sure. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Love it. 
Yeah, if you got on the um, the seven days free for for acad- for the academy, uh, speed running the bug bounty course. I appreciate that you're doing the bug bounty course and not like a different course. <laughs> so uh, yeah, props for that. Awesome. All right, let's let's do this. Um, okay, before we do this though. Um, we actually need to grab the binaries. So what I'm going to do here is just do python3-m dash http.server. Let's do 8081. And then from here, let's come into ctfs um, bookstore. And then let's wget. Uh, what's the IP address of the target? Oh, it's, we can just do http colon slash slash bookstore.thm slash oh, 8081 slash um, try dash harder. There we go. Okay, we got the um, we got the binary. Um, so let's close this. Let's uh, new project next. Alex fails at re. Let's call it that. And then what we can do is, God, it's been so long since I used Ghidra. Um, if we come in here, come into CTFs, bookstore, we can think we can just drag and drop, right? Okay. Yep. And then we'll just analyze this file. Okay. Okay. Yes, analyze it, please. Do everything. Do all the work for me, please. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to find the main function. Okay, here we go. This is what I wanted to see. So this is like the code for for the application. Everything else, you can do what I do and just ignore everything else <laughs> and just look at the code. Um, I don't know how to make the uh, to make it bigger. Let's see. Don't actually don't let um don't tell Tibbs that I was doing reverse engineering on Web App Wednesday. He'll like he'll be angry at me. He'll be like, hey, web apps only. Um I don't know. I don't know how to make the text bigger, so apologies for that. I mean maybe I can do control shift plus. Oh, control plus. Kind of. Doesn't actually get any bigger. Oh no, it does. Okay, so. Oh my god, what is going on? It's, okay, this will do. So we got to this point. So remember when we ran the application? It says, "Hey, what's the um, what's the magic number?" And then if we run it again, let's cancel this. One, two, three, four, five. It get it says um, incorrect. Try harder. So this scan f. This is looking for input. So this is going to be like the the input that we put into the application. Then it's saying, hey, local fourteen is equal to local one c, um, and this is uh, XOR, and then this value, and then local eighteen. And we can, we actually have the value of local eighteen up here. And then it says, hey, if local 14 equals equals this value, then we get our privileged shell. So, okay, this is annoying. <laughs> um, okay, let's, let's pull up mousepad again and see if we can figure this out with good old maths. Um, where am I? Let's see if we can figure this out. We basically just have to solve this equation and then pump it into Python. And then I think we'll be good. So um, hold on, let me move some things. Uh, gosh, the chat's over here. Let me shrink you guys a little bit. Apologies for that. And then let me go here. And then we should be all good. OK, so. All right, so we've got local 18. So we know this value because we can see it here. This zero, um, this is uh, 
5db3, 5db3. And then do we have any other values? What's local 1c? Ah, okay, so this is 0x, uh, 1116. So local 1c is 0x, 1116. And then, and then we have this constant value, so I'm just going to put const. Oh, no, that's 0x1116. That's that one, isn't it? Uh, how do we find these again? And we have this value as well. Okay. <laughs> 0x, 5d, cd, 21, f4. Okay, so local 14 equals um, local 1c. Whoops, where's the carrot? There it is. Um, 0x, 1116, carrots. Um, local underscore 18. And then we have, okay, so we have local 14 is this. Okay, so if we rewrite this equation, we have local 1c equals, wait a second, hold on, let me do maths. Uh, so we have this value, we have this value, uh, equals this one, and then this, and then this. Okay. All right. So if we rewrite the equation, we have Local 1c equals this, this, this. Um, and this is all XOR. So if we grab this, I might be completely wrong. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Um, and we're going to Python 3. Does Python 3 just understand the XOR? Maybe. Grab this value. Let's try it. Ah, <laughs> we're, we're roots. I can't believe that worked. Okay, that was, I'm not really able to explain what happened, but basically, um, all we did is we have these variables, right? So we have local 18, we know this value, we have this constant value, and then we have this um, value here. So we know the local 14 equals this, but it also equals this. So if we rewrite the equation as local 1c equals one, two, three, um, and then solve this using Python, that will give us this, this value, which lets us do the privilege flag. And this is why I don't do reverse engineering, because now my brain hurts, um, and it's, it's, you know, that's, that's life, huh? So, <laughs> gosh, okay. Oops, my glass is stuck to, um, to my mug mats. If you if you want to, ah, I'm I'm breaking the rules of my sharing resources early already. But if you're really interested in in reverse engineering, um, a cool resource is. I mean, there's loads of really good resources. Um, uh, I sometimes watch Lowry Wired. Yeah, here it is. There's some good um, reverse engineering videos here, so definitely um, give her a follow or subscribe if you're if you're interested in um, like reverse engineering. I think she works in Microsoft, if I recall, as like a maybe a malware analyst or reverse engineer. Oh yeah, I reverse engineer malware. There we go. Cool. So um, and there's loads of like really practical videos. Most of them just like. Whew, I don't know, like go over my head, but occasionally it's nice to kind of sit through one and, and try and understand what's going on. So, uh, so all good. So second resource of the day, how many followers does, do they have? 11K, so still a decent, decent sized 
YouTube channel, but um, maybe not, you know, as big as some of the massive creators. So all good. Oh, gosh. Yeah, now I feel like I've earned my sleep. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, I, I have no idea. How do I how do I code and stream? It's I feel like like if I'm just doing web app stuff, it's not too bad. I can just kind of like blurt out my thoughts. But if it's something like quite complicated um, or if it's something that I'm not used to, then it's um, yeah, there's definitely lots of gaps while I need to think. I like buffer my uh, my thoughts and then all my thoughts come out and then I go back to concentrating for a bit and re rebuffer 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 the thoughts uh, if that makes sense um oh to install um Gidra on Kali I think I uh, we just did it right so let me so you can just sudo apt install Gidra like this um, and then that should install it for you and you're all good to go. Uh, honestly, I don't like, I use it like once every six months or something like that. Maybe, um, oh yes, John Rogers, get the root flag. Otherwise we'll have to come back and do it again. Um, cd slash roots. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the heads up because I need those points. Let's see where we are um, in the standings. The live stream. Oh, we've dropped. We've dropped. <laughs> I think I was 4% for a little while. Now we're back to 5%. So rip me, uh, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, the points all help. So all good. Um, all right, it's my turn to, to point out the mistake. There's a missing eye in your Ghidra. <laughs> so I'm, I'm on the ball today. So all good. All right. Um, so that's it. That's the box done. So I'll take a few more questions before we wrap up uh, for today. Um, maybe I'll let the cats in. Hold on. Hello, kittens. One of them's on the on the cat tree. She's on her way in. Hello. There she is. You right, Popeye? Hello. Come here, you. Oh. Say hello to live stream, Poppy. This is uh, kitten number yeah. number one or two. You all right? Hey. I think I've just woken her up. She probably went to sleep after um, after I kicked her out. They're literally, every time I set up my desk to live stream, they start doing laps of the house. So, um, so yeah, all good. Um, all right, let me keep scrolling down. <laughs> yeah, cat stream, for sure. I feel like it, it's okay to let them in at the end. Because during the stream, they're so distracting. They go crazy. I think they just, they don't like being ignored. So uh, when I'm quiet working, they just sleep. And then as soon as I try to record a video, go on live stream, they just go mental. So um, even recording can be quite hard sometimes. I have to lock them in the bedroom upstairs. And uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, net cat for sure. Oh, let me highlight this. Nice. All good. All right. Um, I don't think I can see any more questions coming in. Uh, coming in. So I think, unless there's any other questions coming, in, I think we can wrap up the stream there for for today. A little bit shorter, so apologies for that. But we got through the box um, at a fairly rapid pace, I think. So so all good. But hopefully you're all having a good January so far. Um, have a great rest of the day or, you know, sleep well if you're 
if you're uh, further east from, from here, uh, get a good night's sleep before work tomorrow or whatever you have going on. And uh, catch you all next week. So I'll be back on um, Tuesday, I think. So next week we'll be back to the usual schedule. Um, and then Tibbs will be, be here on Wednesday. So thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, catch you all next time.